were I, who to my cost already am one of those strange, prodigious creatures, man, a spirit free to choose for my own share what sort of flesh and blood I please to wear, I'd be a dog, a monkey, or a bear, or anything but that vain animal who is so proud of being rational. The senses are too gross, and he'll contrive a sixth to contradict the other five. And before certain instinct, we'll prefer reason, which fifty times for one does err. Reason, an ignis fatuus of the mind, which leaves the light of nature, sense, behind. Pathless and dangerous wandering ways it takes Through error's fenny bogs and thorny breaks Whilst the misguided follower climbs with pain Mountains of whimsies heaped in his own brain Stumbling from thought to thought Falls headlong down into doubt's boundless sea Where, like to drown, books bear him up a while And make him try to swim with bladders of philosophy in hopes still to o'ertake the skipping light, the vapor dances in his dazzled sight, till spent it leaves him to eternal night. Then old age and experience, hand in hand, lead him to death, and make him understand, after a search so painful and so long, that all his life he has been in the wrong. Huddled in dirt the reasoning engine lies, who was so proud, so witty, and so wise. Pride drew him in, as cheats their bubbles catch, and made him venture to be made a wretch. His wisdom did his happiness destroy, aiming to know the world he should enjoy. And wit was his vain, frivolous pretense of pleasing others at his own expense. For wits are treated just like common whores, first they're enjoyed, and then kicked out of doors. The pleasure past, a threatening doubt remains that frights the enjoyer with succeeding pains. Women and men of wit are dangerous tools and ever fatal to admiring fools. Pleasure allures, and when the fops escape, tis not that they're beloved but fortunate, and therefore what they fear at heart they hate. But now methinks some formal band and beard takes me to task. Come on, sir, I am prepared. Then, by your favor, anything that's writ against this jibing, jingling knack called wit likes me abundantly. But you'll take care upon this point not to be too severe. Perhaps my muse were fitter for this part. For I profess I can be very smart on wit, which I abhor with all my heart. I long to lash it in some sharp essay, but your grand indiscretion bids me stay and turns my tide of ink another way. What rage ferments in your degenerate mind to make you rail at reason and mankind? Blessed glorious man, to whom alone kind heaven and everlasting soul hath freely given, whom his great maker took such care to make, that from himself he did the image take, and this fair frame in shining reason dressed, to dignify his nature above beast. Reason, by whose aspiring influence, we take a flight beyond material sense, dive into mysteries, then soaring pierce the flaming limits of the universe, search heaven and hell, find out what's acted there, and give the world true grounds of hope and fear. Hold, mighty man, I cry. All this we know from the pathetic pen of Ingelow, from Patrick's Pilgrim, Sib's soliloquies, and tis this very reason I despise, this supernatural gift that makes a mite think he's the image of the infinite, comparing his short life void of all rest to the eternal and the ever-blessed, this busy, puzzling stirrer-up of doubt that frames deep mysteries, then finds them out, filling with frantic crowds of thinking fools, the reverend Bedlam's colleges and schools, born on whose wings each heavy sot can pierce the limits of the boundless universe. So charming ointments make an old witch fly, 
and bear a crippled carcass through the sky. Tis this exalted power whose business lies in nonsense and impossibilities. This made a whimsical philosopher before the spacious world his tub prefer. And we have many modern coxcombs who retire to think, because they have not to do. But thoughts were given for action's government. Where action ceases, thoughts impertinent. Our sphere of action is life's happiness, and he that thinks beyond thinks like an ass. Thus, whilst against false reasoning I inveigh, I own right reason which I would obey, that reason which distinguishes by sense and gives us rules of good and ill from thence, that bounds desires with reforming will, to keep them more in vigor, not to kill. Your reason hinders Mine helps to enjoy, renewing appetites yours would destroy. My reason is my friend, yours is a cheat. Hunger calls out, my reason bids me eat. Perversely yours, your appetite does mock. This asks for food, that answers, what's the clock? This plain distinction, sir, your doubt secures. Tis not true reason I despise, but yours. Thus I think reason righted. But for man I'll ne'er recant, defend him if you can. For all his pride and his philosophy, tis evident beasts are in their degree as wise at least and better far than he. Those creatures are the wisest, who attain by surest means the ends at which they aim. If therefore Jowler finds and kills his hair, better than Miri's supplies committee chair, Though one's a statesman, t'other but a hound, Jowler in justice will be wiser found. You see how far man's wisdom here extends. Look next if human nature makes amends. Whose principles are more generous and just, And to whose morals you would sooner trust? Be judge yourself, I'll bring it to the test. Which is the basest creature, man or beast? Birds feed on birds. Beasts on each other prey, but savage man alone does man betray. Pressed by necessity, they kill for food. Man undoes man to do himself no good. With teeth and claws by nature armed, they hunt nature's allowance to supply their want. But man with smiles, embraces, friendships, praise, inhumanly his fellow's life betrays. With voluntary pains works his distress, Not through necessity, but wantonness. For hunger or for love they bite or tear, Whilst wretched man is still in arms for fear. For fear he arms, and is of arms afraid, From fear to fear successively betrayed. Base fear the source whence his best passions came, His boasted honor and his dear-bought fame, the lust of power, to which he's such a slave, and for the which alone he dares be brave, to which his various projects are designed, which make him generous, affable, and kind, for which he takes such pains to be thought wise, and screws his actions in a forced disguise, leads a most tedious life in misery, under laborious, mean hypocrisy, Look to the bottom of his vast design, Wherein man's wisdom, power, and glory join. The good he acts, the ill he does endure, Tis all from fear to make himself secure. Merely for safety after fame they thirst, For all men would be cowards if they durst. And honesty's against all common sense, Men must be knaves. Tis in their own defense mankind's dishonest, if they think it fair amongst known cheats to play upon the square, you'll be undone. Nor can weak truth your reputation save. The knaves will all agree to call you knave. Wronged shall he live, insulted or oppressed, who dares be less a villain than the rest. Thus here you see what human nature craves. Most men are cowards, all men should be knaves. 
The difference lies, as far as I can see, not in the thing itself, but the degree. And all the subject matter of debate is only who's a knave of the first rate. Thank you so much for watching, folks. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button and consider subscribing for more videos like this one every Wednesday.